Attempts to keep the pestilent Zhongnu at bay with lavish silks and other coveted items have met with limited success and always appear as weakness on the part of our government. Efforts to locate their camps and exterminate the problem at its source are even more difficult, as the nomads move like the wind much swifter than our mightier but more heavily laden armies. It seems the only recourse is to continue the long wall, making it of sufficient height and width that the barbarians' horses cannot vault it. West of the Great Loop of the Yellow River, along the Silk Road at a place called Jia Yu Guan, you are to establish a settlement and stretch the Great Wall westward once again. The weather is dry here, and the rains unpredictable. It would be advisable to keep an adequate supply of food stockpiled in case the crops should fail. The hills and rocks hide loads of iron ore, however. Using a new smelting process requiring more intense heat and quantities of wood to stoke the flames, steel, a new metal even stronger than iron, can now be produced. Troops armed with potent steel blades will have a sharper edge with which to smite any foe. G'day mates and welcome back to Emperor. We're heading in today and we're finally producing steel. So we saw that in the last mission, but now we actually get to produce it. Uh, my theory is that it's going to require just regular smelters, but it's probably going to require coal or charcoal or something to actually produce it because uh, there are certain processes involved with steel that are more complicated than just smelting iron, uh, at least in, in reality. I don't know about in the game. Now, it looks like it's going to be a military mission. They do mention the steel there, so probably going to have to get cracking on weapons fairly quickly. And uh, Silk Road, blah, blah, blah. So we might be able to do some trading again. Last mission, I think it was last mission, I was selling uh, quite large volumes of silk off to Kashgar at an inflated price. I think I'm going to continue doing that. I've been told now that, let's jump into the city. I've been told that Kashgar will never get angry at me. So, uh, perhaps, oh, geez, this is a funny looking map. Hell of a lot of desert. But I've been told that cash guards, have a look at them, will never get angry. They're always going to remain just generally apathetic. So there's no reason why I can't just buy silk wherever sells silk. I probably can't grow up myself. But just sell it onwards to them at the maximum price that they will buy, which is, you know, possibly 150 profit per item. Now, it does mean I'll have a lot of cash tied up in, in stock that I've got in my city. But if I can bring it in and sell off uh, 24 per year, and I think it last mission went up to 36, so it may vary from time to time. But if I can sell off shit tons of silk, there's really no reason not to have it in if they're not going to get pissed off. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that though and make sure nothing bad happens. Um, where is the iron ore they mentioned? Antelope or Saiga? Yeah, Saiga Antelope. Uh, salt, so we've got two food sources there, I'm assuming. Let's have a look here. It'll be hunting and three food sources, and then salt is a, third, a fourth one, but I'm going to add bulk again, so we may need to import the bulk salt. Salt is not particularly reliable as a food source. Uh, I keep mentioning the bulk thing, but that's really quite important. If you're feeding, uh, you know, highly evolved housing, if you've got some housing down and they're eating uh, say tasty food or whatever appetizing food, but you're only providing the equivalent volume of two types of food They're really going to burn through that food very very quickly So even though you think you're giving them a lot of food they will eat through your stocks So salt is not that good and I found the iron uh, salt nope steel furnace, so I Assume I just placed them down here um, Let me just have a quick look at that They require yeah, okay. They require wood so I'm going to bring in some timber, <clears throat> cut some timber down and, ooh, hang on, that's a good question. Can I, just unpause, remove that, can I cut, no, no raw resources, I can't cut any wood, not that there is any on this map anyway. Uh, that's just little shrubs. So there's no timber here, so I'm going to need to import it. And it's probably not going to come from Kashgar, so I'm going to have to find somebody who will bring that wood in. Now, we need a fair bit of money per year, which is easy enough, 2000 is nothing, I can generally do far and above that. Uh, I think even Kashgar will give us, yeah, we can do carved jade. That'll probably, alone, the 12 carved jade a year will probably cover most of our profit. And then anything else will just come from taxes and whatnot, which again, require wood. So that could be a problem actually. Four trading partners, I don't think that's gonna be difficult to do. And now the Great Wall, um, oh, it's kind of hard to see, but it sort of goes through here. And it requires a lot of wood. 
So this is going to be a wood import mission. So I need to fund the creation of of import. So that's going to be a little more difficult. I'm going to have to figure this one out, and uh, and it's going to have to be down here because I need to farm around this area to get all the food. This road is going to have to go. So let's just have a quick look at what industries we have. We've got clay. We've got pottery. We've got jade carvers. <clears throat> it's a very low level housing overall. We've got hemp, two food types, we've got no orchards, and what gods have we got? We have lots of them. So we need to keep gifting to those guys. These three are probably not going to be relevant because I'm not going to be putting down any housing, although they may, Sun Tzu might be good as a battle. Huang Di's a little average, I think, um, in terms of uh, his battle power. He's an archer, so if they ever get him in close range, he gets wiped out. Confucius. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure this stuff out as I. I'll do it off screen. But um, Sun Tzu might be useful, so it may be worthwhile my having a, just a single house placed down somewhere. I'll figure that out and try to decide how I'm going to approach this. Okay, guys, I've gone for a little bit of a uh, eclectic-looking design here. It's. Um, I was hoping that I could just line everything up here and have a nice, big, beautiful feng shui, uh, easy street, so to speak. But unfortunately, we need to get water, and that needs to be on the um, what's this stuff called on the water table. Let's have a quick look at the feng shui here. I know I, I harp on about how much I hate it, but I've done a reasonably good job so far. I mean, it, it's made very easy by the fact that there's fire feng shui everywhere. But uh, I've done a reasonably good job so far. It's not going to be perfect. For example, I cannot get the uh, what's this thing called the administrative city anywhere in comfortable. I'd have to go in here somewhere, which. Uh, I prefer not to do because that's all my farmland, so um, you know, I could do it up here later as a dump, but I would prefer, much prefer in fact, to see the thing included within the city somewhere. Um, I'll probably take out these three houses to do that though, I probably wasn't thinking very well. But I have left a space here for a single noble block. You can go right there once I get some ceramics and hemp in. Um, and that'll allow me to possibly again take out a couple more houses and throw down a, uh, what's it called? A religious dude. Actually, no, I need to take it out. I've already placed him down. Over here, the Confucian Academy will allow me to, if required, get Sun Tzu, because it'll be giving 100% coverage to all the nobles in the city. So hopefully that works. I don't think you have like a, a minimum number that you need, but uh, we'll see how that works anyway. Actually, just to cut back to explain how this all works, uh, to get to the mill, I need to reduce the distance from this market square down to the mill. So what I've done is created a basically a direct link straight down. They go right through the center of this block, which I've sort of tried to beautify up as much as possible. But uh, only destination walkers can pass through here. Everything is blocked on these gates. So they can go right down, gather the stuff here, and then head straight back up here to this market square. I'm going to have to have all my uh, like all warehouses down here to... Uh, keep this distance as small as possible. I've tried to minimize the number of houses up here too. I could probably knock a couple off if it proves to be unstable. Okay, and the trade agreements are beginning to come in. First one rejected, Luo Yang opening up nicely. Uh, Yin's gone, Chengdu's opened up, uh, down. Uh, okay, well not all of them came in. A couple of the closer ones appeared. Let's have a quick look at who opened up. Lolan didn't, Zhongyu re rejected, but I know what they want, so I can bribe them off. It's pretty much the same every time, but uh, in this case, it's Millet and Silk I can bribe them with. Uh, who opened up? Chengdu will buy weapons, which could be useful, and salt. So I may do a weapon salt smithing thing. They will sell me wood as well, which is kind of handy. I think I'm going to use them because I think, I, I remember I need uh, wood for steel, so... Import wood, sell them weapons, and probably get a bit of salt there too, if at all possible. Luo Yang will buy steel, which is 105 if I recall correctly. They'll also buy some more carved jade, which uh, I can get from Kashgar. So they'll sell me 24 jade and only buy 12, so I do need to find another buyer. And at this point, Luo Yang appears to be the one to do it. They'll sell me more timber as well, so... Um, and wheat. Timber and wheat, so I'm going to need to try to... And, and silk. Okay, so I really do want to keep them. Yeah, Luo Yang will pair up well with Kashgar. Somewhere nice and easy. I may keep all the trading in one area, but I'll, I'll try to pair them up as required. They will go and synergize quite well together. Um, in fact, I may set that up now. I think Luo Yang and Kashgar will be the first two that I work on once I have enough employees in the city to actually start doing something. 
And here we go, Guangzhou has opened up, Luo Yang, Jiangzhou, a couple of rejections. Let's have a look at this new one, Guangzhou down here. They buy more carved jade. Uh, food is irrelevant, steel is not a huge amount, especially when I can probably sell more weapons. Uh, they will also buy weapons, that's nice. Actually, let me think about that. Weapons may be a more relevant choice to go, for, go to first. Get, uh, what was I thinking? Chengdu, getting Chengdu down here. I think I may work on Chengdu first, simply because it will be a more uh, valuable place for me. Having having salt up here, collecting down to Chengdu, getting the weapons done and the wood imports will allow me to have a nice self-contained little unit over here, as well as start working on my military immediately. So I think I'll do that before I do the Kashgar one. A quick note as well, in case you guys are having a little bit of an OCD fit, I haven't connected these roads up yet, simply because um, it's an easy way of turning them off. Oh, hang on. That's odd. I didn't think about that. Uh, this one here won't turn on. This one here will. I, I completely misread that. Let's disconnect them there. The point of that is that it'll allow me to control which ones turn on, so I can work on getting one of them working perfectly. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit stupid and realized that. But anyway, that's what that's for, at least. Okay, a little bit concerned that food is going to be in. I'm, I'm concerned that I'm under the pressure here, under the pump. I think there may be an attack early. It's just got me good. Sort of giving me that feeling. I'm stumbling over my words here, trying to articulate my thoughts. So I've thrown down, uh, what do we, Chengdu, to import a bunch of rice. They look like the ones who would sell me the most amount of food from one location. Most others only sell me 12 at a time. So I'll bring in a bunch of rice, and that'll allow me to start leveling these houses up with these ones here, adding additional bulk as required. Now, they also sell silk, so I thought I'd buy a whole bunch in for 225 and temp temporarily throw down Kashgar here. I may leave them there and, and build around it, but for the time being, they can sit there comfortably and buy off all the silk. I can sell it for 430, which is very nearly the max, but 430 is a nice round number. Now, hopefully, hopefully I'm right and that Kashgar won't get pissed off, and they will buy that. And I'll make, what's that, 430, uh, shit tons of money, like a couple hundred per trip. So it's a highly, highly profitable trade good, and I don't have to do a thing other than provide uh, 9, 18 employees. Very, very easy. Okay, Luo Yang is selling us more wood. Which one are they? I don't think I'm actually trading with them just yet. Let's double check which one they are. Luo Yang will sell me more wood. Uh, they'll sell me a little bit of silk and wheat and, and, and steel and carved jade. So they're my pair with Kashgar. But I may not want to pair them with Kashgar anymore if they're selling that much wood. Uh, I'll probably use them for the monument. I'm not sure exactly what. I just I don't want people traveling long distance across the city. So I have to figure out what I'm doing here. But either way, I have a little bit of unemployment. So it's probably going to be time to work on... I can probably all just do it all here in this area. I think that might be the way to do it. So in that case, I'm going to need to start importing jade. Selling carved jade and bring in Luo Yang. Who can also sell me wheat and timber to run my various... Uh, tax offices and so on and so forth and I'll buy some steel, but it's probably not worth it Carved jade is I think where the money is going to be at So to that end, let's set all of that stuff up Alrighty, here we go nicely set up all the various uh, trading bits opened up So they're now selling me car uh, uh, selling me jade buying carved jade. You're also going to uh, buy carved jade so yeah, I think that's looking good. Now I'm going to have to set up, I'm not going to bother with assault, that's just too far away for a measly income. But I'm going to set up the weaponsmiths over in this area and try to bring the timber up as required. Now I've currently got a small worker shortage, which will resolve itself once I get hemp. So I've got a small amount of hemp, but the, the step to more hemp is going to be to, uh, <clears throat> what's that word, to get the irrigation going. I need to irrigate these so I can get maximum stuff done. I'm also focusing on agriculture, so industry is probably going to be a low priority at this point. Actually, no, let's just do it the other way around. Religion is going to be a low priority for now, simply because the gods are not totally pissed off just yet, and I can get a stockpile of resources to take care of them shortly. Food is holding on. We're currently working on plain food, so once I get irrigation going, we'll be in a lot better position. Okay, we're now massively in debt. I haven't been paying attention. So what's happened is all this silk has eaten into my money. I thought I had heaps left. 
So I can't actually finish off building this over here, but I've dumped a hell of a lot of cash in there. And uh, the timber should start being shuttled across. Uh, assuming we don't go too much further in debt and lose the mission. I have also, for the record, changed around the industry now, low priority, with religion being slightly higher. So uh, once this sells off, once... Um uh, oh, they're not buying the silk, that's probably why. They are pissed off. I think I've maybe built a city around a premise that was totally wrong. Let's just have a quick look. Let's pause this and have a look at Kashgar. They're still apathetic. So why are they not buying silk at the price they wanted? They've changed it. They're now buying at 310-ish. It's probably a bit higher than that, but a round number will do. So I'm going to sell off for a lot lower profit, about 75, uh, 85 per unit, assuming they continue to buy. And I've set myself massively in debt. So let's see if we can get out of this hole that we've dug through bad gameplay choices. Okay, they are now buying the silk. It's now brought us up a uh, thousand in profit, and we're going to gradually tick over and keep on selling the stuff. At the same time, the car, the jade is also coming in, and we're beginning to carve it. So that's what's hitting some of our bottom line here. I'm actually going to stop buying. No, I'm going to keep buying silk, but I'm only going to buy it in sets of two at a time. Uh, the reason for that is I really do need to get out of debt, quick smart, so I can keep building and expanding the city. Okay, out of debt for the first time. That brought us very, very close to the brink. We actually did have one debt anniversary. Uh, gift of wood. Yes, I would love a gift of wood, but I'll postpone that. I'm going to throw down a... It was a hemp shop, I hope. Yes, it was a hemp shop. So I can level these guys up a little bit further. And we're going to need to get a storage yard over here for... For... What's that stuff called? For wood. There we go, for wood. We'll accept the wood. <clears throat> Now that'll bring it over and allow us to start smelting the steel as required and turning it into weapons. I'm going to need another storage yard here for weapons. Now I have been selling a couple of them to try to get us out, but I think I can stop selling the weapons now. Assuming we're going to have sufficient cash. I've stopped the silk import export thing because it was just destroying me. And these guys just weren't buying enough. Once I've got more flexibility in my... Uh, in my cash here, once I got a little bit of leeway, I'll get back onto it. I think I jumped onto it too quickly with a combination of overestimating, thank you, overestimating how much Kashgar would pay for it simply because it was uh, a clear number at the beginning. So I do need to be very, very careful with that. 310 appears to be what they're selling. Let's just double check that to see if it fluctuates. 310 is indeed the limit of what they will pay for the time being. Okay, price increase of silk. That is interesting. Does it mean anything to us? Will they pay more? No, they're not going to pay any more. Does mean that we can't... No, we're still paying 225 for it. I think these price increases may be bugged. I have not seen any change, whether it be in the price I pay or the price that I can get for it. So we'll wait for another month or so to see if it'll tick over. But I don't think... Okay, we're in June now. We're still paying 225 and these guys are still limited at 310. So that price increase means bugger all. Okay, seeing in the new year, we are out of debt yet again. It's been a bit of a struggle. I have not built a particularly efficient trading city here. I tried to go too big, too fast. But on the positive side, we do have our military fully done, which is pretty sad considering it's only a single fort. Uh, but we're pretty much stable. I've got the workers I need. I've got the room to grow if required. And everyone seems to be pretty happy. Well, a shit ton of food, unfortunately. So I'm probably going to stop importing wheat. That I've already stopped. Brilliant. So we've got enough wheat going on. Uh, what are you? Gift of wood? Um, yeah, I think it's about time that I start working on building this great warping monument. It's going to take a lot of time to do. And if I just sit around and do nothing, then the city is just going to come under more and more threats, probably from the Zhongnu. Is it still called? Yeah, the Zhongnu Empire. So to that end, I'm going to have to start throwing down a little area up here. We're going to start working on getting that monument set up. Okay, this is interesting. Economic prosperity at Kashgar. I don't know exactly what that means. What does that mean? They are not buying very much, so there was a silk decrease in before, so they're purchasing less, so... I honestly have no idea. Maybe they'll pay more? Nope, they're not going to pay more. I have no idea what that means, but whatever. We'll just keep ticking along as per normal with no cash 
and devolving housing due to rampant unhappiness. <laughs> this has been a shit city, uh, but at least I can recognize that. I suppose that's one positive here. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to keep things under control. Taxation is netting me a tiny amount of cash. 12, 1300 a year is not bad. Um, but it's going to have to get better if I want to stay in the black. High taxes are not preventing immigration. It's unhappy people preventing immigration. I'm going to have to have a, uh, a festival next year, but I've been avoiding it simply because cash has been so low. And a drought. This is one of those things where everything goes wrong at once. Thankfully, we should have enough hemp stored up. Let's double check. Our gods are not massively unhappy. They are reasonable at this point. But uh, let's keep them happy with a couple of weapons, which we are exporting. It may be worth my while to begin stockpiling them. Okay, Kashgar is now buying more silk, so I'm assuming that's what that economic prosperity thing was about. Uh, what we can probably do is start buying in small quantities of silk. I'm not going to stuff up like I did last time. We'll bring in just, say, four at a time. Uh, two here, two there, and just sell off as much as we can to Kashgar. Uh, yeah, Kashgar. To do that, though, we're only going to have... Selling carved jade and silk. Let's say we're only going to have four in at a time. That'll, uh, that'll limit the amount we have in the city to eight. Four here, two there, and two there. That'll keep things more under control. Okay, unemployment beginning to edge up again. It's probably worthwhile to just... Thank you. Happy New Year. Be happy, people. Uh, it's probably going to be worthwhile to start working on this wholesale now. So I'm going to need a hell of a lot more timber. To that end, I probably can just tell it to get wood. I'm going to see if this works. So it should be able to go get wood. And then the guy should also be able to deliver it to the monument. If that doesn't work, I'll just throw a trading post up here that buys nothing but wood. I may have to relocate some of the guys down here if that's going to stuff things up. But we'll see how we go. And there we go. They're delivering it nicely and going and getting it at the same time. So this warehouse is just going to churn the wood through and, uh, and deposit it off. It could be worth my while actually throwing down. Assuming I've got the cash, which I seem to have the cash. We'll throw down another one. I'm actually going to roadblock off here as well. I don't want guys going through. Now, you are going to get more wood. Now, that'll double the amount of throughput I've got. And, uh, and then I'll stock it up when we're busy compacting down all the soil. And then send the guys up again. A cash guard buying more silk. Perhaps I should have waited until longer into the mission to get more cash out of them. They're now buying 36 per year. So... Now that we've got a little bit more cash as well, let's dump this up to eight. It's still going to be buying carved jade, but also buying a fair bit of silk each trip. Hopefully that will, uh... Yep, yeah, that is looking like things are now finally on the uptick. Yearly profit has been met, four trading partners have been met. All I gotta do now is keep the city uh, together and coherent until the Earthen Great Wall is built. Made a lot of mistakes this time, but I think I've learned from my mistakes. We'll ho hopefully find out. Also need to make sure these guys don't get too pissed off. So I've got quite a lot of mills around. What I'm going to do is give off, uh, let's go a medium gift for now. And then we can start dropping all this millet off, hopefully, back to... No, nope, looks like we had a whole bunch of people already with millet. What I'm going to do is throw down a sneaky little storage yard here. And uh, just accept millet so I can start gifting off to the Zhong Yu. So whenever I've got a large excess of it. Uh, they're going to start... Yeah, okay, there's a whole bunch of millet going in there. So there's a shit ton of guys waiting to deliver food. Hopefully, I can start sending more gifts to them. Send another large gift. I don't think too many gifts in the same year are effective. But I've got a whole big stockpile I can send off and uh, make them a bit happier. Okay, wall construction is proceeding well. We're currently on the second carpentry phase. So the next level, I've got a whole bunch of these uh, work camps all placed and I can just gradually connect them as unemployment increases. I've also just opened up trade with Fujiwal, Fujiwa, whatever they're called, which will be very nice because I can now have... Uh, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I now have... Let's connect you up there. Like that. I now have access to more timber locally not that it really matters too much although actually they've gone through it quite quickly so maybe it does matter maybe i was planning for the future which is always good so we now got more timber coming in here that allow us to just dump it straight into this monument pretty much as quickly as we can do it the only limiting factor now is how quickly we can build this thing which is going to be via carpenter sheds and uh and laborers up here so leveling up these houses with ceramics is probably going to be a useful thing. 
I've only got one guy producing it because there's only so much space. I really, I suppose you could say, drop the ball a bit with regards to water access. But I think with a little bit of creative, it's not going to fit there, is it? But I don't need this, do I? I don't actually need this connection because it's going around that way. Now that I've put that second hemp farm in. So by removing that, I can potentially get two clay pits in. Uh, they're not going to be well placed, unfortunately, because the water table is not very good. But two clay pits will have to do at this point. I'm going to connect you... Oh, this is going to be really shit. What I'm going to do is just start wasting workers at this point and throw down a... Where are we? A, an inspector's tower. God damn it. An inspector's tower right there. And uh, just have him patrol... I suppose you can go up as far as that, and I'll throw the um, the kilns here. Uh, there's one at least, two, and I'll probably put them over here. Three, four. There we go. That's all the kilns done. We should have more than enough ceramics coming in to take care of everything, to allow me to level up and throw down my first. Can't only build on cleared land. Is there? Not enough space there. I thought I left one. Yep, have one. One, two, three, four. How big are these things? One, two, three, four. What? Oh, fuck, that's annoying. I forgot about that. They don't require well access, they have their own well. Um, means you're gonna have to be placed up here. Oh, god damn, this game's a pain in the ass sometimes. Uh, well, it's a pain in the ass if you don't know what you're doing, at least. Um, what I can probably do is remove that. Nope, let's, let's put that back for the timing. I may need that for the house for Feng Shui. Let's remove those two and throw you... Doesn't work. That's going to be really shitty environment. That's the only spot in here. I wonder if I could just put it there. Let's knock out a couple of houses here. And what's that? That is an acupuncturist clinic. Where can I relocate you to? You know, it doesn't matter. For Feng Shui, instead of not placing building, I will accept that. Why won't that go there? It will go there. I'll throw you down now. Uh, bad Feng Shui. We're stuffing things up a little bit, but I guess I hadn't realized that. I could set up a little block over here that's just dedicated to that one house, but I do like to keep the city looking a little more harmonious in terms of uh, all connected. It's sort of eclectic, it looks a bit more natural with roads going everywhere and connecting parts. This is how a city should look, I think. Now that will allow me to start gifting these gods here if required. So I've got the Sun Tzu guy, the card I can play if we do get invaded at any point in the future. I've got tons of wood, uh, but I've got lots of weapons as well. So I can bring in either one of these. I could probably even bring in Menesis. Menesius? Oh, I thought I'd dealt with this before. Confucius Men Mencius. So I can bring in Mencius at any point in the future if required as well to... Uh, uh, I think he boosts trade as well as tax income or some something like that. Anyway, uh, let's also keep the Zhongnu on side. They seem to be reasonably happy, I guess. They're not invading me. But uh, we'll keep giving them large millet gifts and uh, see what happens there. And another drought has completely destroyed all our crops. I don't think they're going to grow at all. No, no, they're growing up a little bit, but uh, we've lost most of the growth. So a bit of a drought, despite the irrigation, is not helping us. Okay, year of the bunny rabbit. We're on the wood rabbit now. So let's go for defensive bonus. None of these are particularly relevant to me. So I'm just going to go defensive bonus and see what I get. Uh, it's only for one year. That's really, really shit. And it doesn't matter. <clears throat> we've got a... Uh, we've got... Actually, with the highest level housing that we can get now, we don't have access to an acrobat, so we do have elegant dwellings, which is the highest we're going to have, which will hopefully take care of our possible unemployment problem. Uh, it's not really an issue at the moment. But things are relatively low. I've got enough food at this point that I could quite comfortably throw down another housing block back here somewhere and put a little direct route up to the mill here, but I don't think that's going to be relevant at this point. It would just be 
more work than I need. Everything's ticking over quite well. In fact, we're now at zero workers needed and a small amount of unemployment, which is perfect. Will allow me to throw down additional carpenters in the future if required. Ooh, we actually got nice bits of unemployment coming in. That's really good. So what I can do is simply connect the next one up. That'll drop us down and I've got room to absorb more unemployment if necessary. Okay, I've chosen who my new god is going to be. I'm going to have a, a god running around the city. I may as well use them since I have all the spare weapons. I'm not actually selling the weapons at the moment. And my cash, although a little bit low, is currently acceptable. But what Confucius will do is to increase our tax income. And considering what reasonably leveled up housing, we should get a fair bit of tax income out of that. I did look at Mencius, but he only makes more traders come in. Doesn't actually increase the amount they trade. So since we're maxing out... There's no real benefit there. I could probably even import more silk. So let's start bringing in a lot more silk. We'll bring up to eight at a time. Where are we? Silk, bring up to eight at a time. That's a fair bit, it's a full load. It probably is worthwhile going down lower, but it doesn't matter. And we'll start exporting. You can have up to 16 stored here at any one time. Now that's, let's stick for 12 for the time being. That will probably drain most of our cash. But let's have a look here. We're currently making nearly 3,000 cash. When uh, Confucius arrives, that should jump up even higher, hopefully. Okay, it's currently at 3,091 just through population increase. Now that Confucius has arrived... Oh, that really sucks. Um, well, it was at 3,045 just before he arrived. Uh, there you go, so it's still increasing by population, but it doesn't appear to have increased particularly much. Um, well, that's just a waste. I might as well sell the weapons. In that case, I'm going to start selling off the weapons that we have. There's no point just keeping them stockpiled. I might as well sell that steel as well. Who buys steel? Um, it's the exports means they buy it. So I can start selling additional steel that I may have. I don't want to sell very much of them. I'm going to sell four at a time simply because steel's 90, weapons are 120. And I think the only reason I've got steel stockpiled up is because the weaponsmiths are all full at the moment. So uh, we'll see how we go anyway. Okay, a few months have ticked over and I think Confucius is having an effect. Maybe it took a month to actually tick in, but it's now going to 3,400, which is an additional, what, three or 400. Uh, it's basically an extra 400 cash per year. Now, what the hell did that drop down? Because he's left the city, that's why. No, he hasn't left the city. Why, oh why, has my cash dropped so much? Dropped uh, by nearly 600 points. Maybe some houses devolved? Yeah, a couple of houses devolved. No, maybe they never evolved. I don't know what's going on. This game is a little bit opaque at times. I'm sure it should be quite simple, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much. We are moving along quite nicely. And there you go, price increase for wood. If that did anything, it would actually be a problem. But as far as I can tell, there is no effect on that. So uh, we are importing quite a lot of wood. But it's at this point, I think we're completely finished. The Great Wall is basically done. We're just going to need a couple more, uh, what do you call them? A couple more um, carpenters to go along. Pull down the scaffolding and then we'll have won the mission, which is not far off now. Uh, what have we got? We've got five trading partners. We've made more than double. Uh... So 225% of what was required. And we're now selling weapons in bulk from here. So it sounds like Mencius just, or Confucius just left the city. I did hear that in the background. So I'm just going to fast forward until the end. City is reasonably good. It did take a little while to stabilize out. I got a little bit too uh, overconfident, a bit cocky there and built up too much at once. But the city is very nice. And I do like the fact that this is working very, very nicely. I can quite easily see a situation in the future where I build through the center here and have one block there and another block on the side over here to really have a good connected city feel rather than these big, that's sort of a little bit, um, I mean, they're meant to represent neighborhoods, but each housing block is a little bit sort of gamey. Having them like this and more connected, I think will be a, a nice step in the future to having my cities look more beautiful. And the mission apparently not finished. It requires three more loads of dirt and three laborers to build up the big gate here. So they put a couple of towers along it. They put a single tower along it, which I guess is kind of cool. It's a more advanced version of the Great Wall than we built last time, I think. But uh, 
eventually they'll get there slowly bit by bit and then we should be able to build on a great big there we go great wall complete let's head onwards to victory a job well done the great wall your laborers have constructed in this parched land is sturdy and strong not unlike the city it protects and there we go guys silken spice at Ja Yuguan. Ja, ja, I don't know how to pronounce this Ja, ja Yuguan. I don't know. But either way, the city is done. The Silk and Spice completed. We've built the Great Wall, extended it through the desert, and we're beginning to protect some of the Silk Road from the Great Zhongyu Empire, which is unfortunately threatening us more and more. We managed to keep them bay with gifts of millet, but that is a little bit weak. Maybe they are catching on to our weakness and they're going to pounce on us in a future mission. Anyway, guys, I've been BLXZ. This has been Emperor. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button if you do indeed the effort, if you enjoy the efforts that I'm making in uh, in building these beautiful cities, or at least partially beautiful cities. And uh, if you've got any comments on how I can improve, by all means, drop a comment. Let me know what you think I can do better. Take care, guys. I'll see you around.